morning, Jeremy. You released recently a new book uh, entitled The Zero Marginal Cost Society. You claim that there is a new uh, industrial revolution. Why is that? Well, when you take a look at all the great economic paradigm shifts in history, they share a common denominator which is at a certain moment of time, three uh, defining technologies emerge and then they converge to create what we call a general purpose technology platform, an infrastructure that fundamentally changes the way we manage power and move economic activity, which is what economics is all about. So for example, in the first industrial revolution, that matrix came together in Britain, communication, energy, and transport. The Brits invented steam power printing, which was a huge leap forward in the ability to communicate quickly with cheap, efficient print material. Then they laid off the telegraph system across Britain, and those communication technologies converged with a new energy source, cheap coal, uh, powered by a new British invention, the steam engine. And then they were smart enough to put the steam engine on rails for locomotives for national transportation. And the rest is history. Uh, we had a second industrial revolution spurred by the United States in the 20th century. Again, the coming together of communication, energy, and transportation to manage power and move economic life. Centralized electricity was a huge change in history, but especially the telephone and later radio and television. And those communication media converged with cheap Texas oil, uh, powered by internal combustion engines. And then Henry Ford changed transportation. He put everyone on the road with cars, buses, and trucks. And that second industrial revolution took uh, the whole world through the 20th century. And it peaked in, in July of 2008, and when oil hit $147 a barrel and uh, purchasing power shut down all over the world. That actually was not just the beginning of the Great Recession. That was actually the beginning of the sunset uh, for a second industrial revolution. That sunset's going to be convulsive and difficult, and it's going to take part over in the next 30 or 40 years. But this represents uh, a huge danger to traditional companies that control specific sectors in, in the market. I'm thinking about uh, taxis versus Uber, Airbnb versus the hotel. How do you see that? Well, let me, let me, let me say what this is. This, this is a third industrial revolution, but it also fundamentally changes the way we organize economic life. What we're seeing again is a convergence of new communication energy and transport to manage power and move economic life. The communication internet that we're all using is now morphing, and it's, um, it's converging with a digitalized renewable energy internet and a digitalized, automated, GPS-guided, and very soon, driverless transport and logistics internet. So we're seeing the creation of three internets melted into one kernel to manage power and move economic life, communication, energy, and transport. And this kernel, uh, these three internets, are riding on top of this platform called the Internet of Things. We're embedding sensors in all of our devices and appliances so they can monitor big data in real time and send it back to these three internets, communication, energy, and transport. So we, we have uh, sensors in agricultural fields and on factory floors and in warehouses and smart homes now, and smart vehicles, and they're, they're sending data to other devices so that we can begin to get a transparent picture of the economic life of society. It's actually an external global brain. This internet of things will be less expensive. What, what it's doing is it's, it's leading us to zero marginal cost society, which is the title of the book. Uh, uh, the digitalization of communication, energy, and transport allows us to, all of us, with our cheap technology, to apply our own analytics to our own data. Let's say you have a small co-op or a SME. You can uh, go up on this Internet of Things platform that's emerging and take your big data on your value chain that you care about and cut it out from all the noise around it. Then you can apply your own analytics and create your own algorithms and apps so you can dramatically increase your aggregate efficiency at every step of conversion on your value chain with your big data and dramatically increase your productivity, reduce your marginal cost to stay competitive in the capitalist market. But a lot of the marginal costs are going to zero, in which case you can produce and share goods and services for free with each other outside the market. And we're seeing this in a, in a major way. I'm, it, I'm kind of surprised that before this book, nobody actually sat down and chronicled. It's been devastating. You remember Napster, the file sharing service for music. It's only been, what, 16, 16. years? So we've got 3 billion people now who are prosumers. They're still sellers and buyers and owners and workers, but they're now prosumers. That is, they're producing and sharing all sorts of virtual goods at near zero marginal cost, free with each other beyond the market. They're producing and sharing their own music, their own news blogs, 
their own YouTube videos, their own free eBooks. They're now taking massive open online college courses, and they're all zero marginal cost. If you produce some music, you can have digital quality with your technology, studio quality for almost nothing. And then whether you send that music to one person or a billion people on the web, the same cost is near zero. So you ask this question about traditional industries, they've been devastated. The music industry uh, has declined. Newspapers and magazines have gone out of business. Television has shrunk because the young people are producing and sharing their own videos on YouTube. Uh, book publishing has really suffered from free eBooks. While these traditional industries have declined, these massive vertically integrated capitalist industries, thousands of new enterprises have emerged, profit and nonprofit, and somewhere in between. And these are the, the companies, not just Google and Facebook, but thousands of startups. They're creating these new platforms. They're creating the apps. They're creating the connectivity for the sharing economy. So what's really happened is it's kind of strange. Capitalism's given birth to this little baby called the sharing economy. Now it doesn't know what to do about it because this little baby's creating its own identity and it's growing up. So capitalism is going to be transformed because it's going to have to figure out its relationship with this new system. This is a new economic system. Uh, first one since capitalism is socialism. So it's a big deal. Now, what I think is going to happen is we're starting to see a hybrid economic system. Part of the day, young millennials, the digital generation, they're in the traditional capitalist market. They're sellers and buyers and owners and workers. They're making profit by selling goods and services in markets. But part of the day already, young people are prosumers and they're producing and sharing goods and services with each other for free. What we didn't expect is that the zero marginal cost phenomenon might go over the firewall to the physical world. I mean, we could see in the virtual world a whole generation democratizing culture, news, entertainment, knowledge taking it away from the elites. We didn't see it going to the physical world. What I'm saying in, in the zero marginal cost society is that Internet of Things platform just crushes through the wall. We have millions of young people now producing their own renewable energy, solar and wind, sending it back to these energy internets in Europe. In Germany. Absolutely, and there's zero marginal cost. 30% of the energy powering Germany now is solar and wind. The fixed cost of the technology is plummeting, just like computer costs are. They've been on an exponential curve for 20 years. The marginal cost, once you put that solar panel in, in Germany, and even little Denmark's doing it, you put in your little wind turbine or your geothermal heat pump, that's the fixed cost and that's plummeting. But the marginal cost is near zero. Right now in Germany, 30% of the energy being generated is actually free. The sun doesn't send a bill and the wind doesn't send a bill. I know everyone smiles, the geothermal heat doesn't send a bill. And Germany's heading to 100% renewable energy. So imagine if you're a small business or a cooperative and you plug into that platform of uh, communication and energy where the communication is near zero marginal cost, the energy is near zero marginal cost. Imagine the increase in your efficiency and productivity. It's a, it just a, it's a model that shakes up the foundations of capitalism fundamentally. And now we're moving to transportation the transportation internet so the kids uh, they don't want to own cars again that's that and that was the centerpiece of the second industrial revolution uh, but young people they look at grandma and grandpa's two cars sitting in the driveway and they say this is not for me they want access to mobility in real time they don't want ownership of the vehicle so in just four or five years millions of young people are using their smartphones to hook up to car sharing services and this is the transportation internet they, they go up on a car sharing service with a little mobile app on a street corner. The communication internet connects them to GPS, which is the transport internet. They find a driver with the car within 90 seconds on GPS of where the passenger is. They connect, pay, pal, pays. The young people are never going to own cars again. Beginning with the millennials, they're moving to access to mobility on automated driverless networks, not ownership. But what's interesting about it is for every car shared, we're eliminating 15 cars from production right now. So we're going to see probably 80% of the vehicles in the world today eliminated in 25 years from now. That's a, a billion vehicles, 800 million are going to be eliminated with car sharing. The rest of those vehicles are going to be electric. They're going to be fuel cell with hydrogen operating with near zero marginal cost renewable energy. So all the traditional companies will be yeah. smashed. And these, these vehicles are going to be printed with recycled materials by 3D printed operations. And guess what? They're going to be driverless. The state of Nevada just gave Daimler permission it, this year to operate driverless trucks in Nevada commercially. So for the transport industry, 
they may not be out of business, but in the long run, they have to change their business model. They're still selling millions of cars, but the curves are there, hmm. the exponential curves. In the long run, where they're going to find value is in erecting and managing the automated GPS transport and logistics internets for road, rail, water, and air transport. But if they don't do that, other kinds of companies will. Schneider might want to do it, or Samsung, and or Consumer Electronics, or IBM, and Cisco, and IT, or companies like Amazon and logistics, or just thousands of startups might want to do it. So again, this is where capitalism has to readjust itself to the sharing economy and transform its business models more, from, more away from selling goods and more toward erecting and managing networks. Mm -hmm. So you have the Googles, the Facebooks, the Twitters, and thousands of other enterprises managing that communication internet. Now, in places like Germany, you have electricity cooperatives that our uh, people are putting together, and they're generating their own green electricity, and that's the majority of electricity in Germany has been democratized. So who runs the energy internet? Well, we say to the power companies, look, you're not going to generate the electricity. You, ca you can't do it as well as millions of small players. But you could e digitalize the electricity grid and help manage that energy internet. And the way you might make money is by setting up partnerships with thousands of enterprises and help them manage their big data on their energy internet. So they can mine the big data with analytics, create algorithms and apps, and they can dramatically increase their efficiencies on their value chain, increase their productivity, and reduce their marginal cost. In return for helping them, those thousands of clients will share their productivity gains back with the power and utility companies, performance contracts. Now this is happening seven years ago when I introduced this model power companies that are in your dreams, though they're now doing it. Um, Eon sold off its fossil fuel and nuclear business this year. It's a huge, one of the four big German power companies. They're moving into uh, digitalizing the electricity grid and managing that internet. ERDF and EDF have joined my group in northern France. I chair a global consortium of the best science and engineering and architectural firms and ITC, and we actually lay out these economic plans. We're doing all of northern industrial France. ERDF and EDF have joined us there to do the layout. Uh, GDF Suez is moving this way. So, uh, and if they don't, others will want to manage the energy internet, all sorts of startups. So it is one of those periods where there's a fundamental paradigm shift, now a new economic system entering onto the stage, the sharing economy, which is somewhat attached to capitalism and somewhat, somewhat completely different, and it's going to create all sorts of political uh, issues and social issues for at least the next half century. How do you name this new capitalism? It's not a new... Capitalism is going to be fundamentally transformed by the new system, which is the sharing economy. Hmm. The sharing economy is the new economic system on the world stage. You know, what happened here is none of us saw this. I teach at the oldest business school in the world, the Wharton School. I've been there for a long time, since 1963 when I was a student. And I, I teach the executive education program and uh, for 15 years the advanced manager program. So what I always say to our CEOs and our, who are my students, I say, look, you always have to find ways to, fi to capture new technologies that allow you to increase your productivity and reduce your marginal cost. So you put out cheaper goods, win over consumers and market share, and bring some nice profits back. We, so in the optimum market, in classical economic theory, the optimum market is where you sell at the marginal cost. But none of us ever anticipated, from Adam Smith to Karl Marx to Lord Keynes, that a technology could become so extreme in its productivity, a technology revolution, that it could reduce marginal cost near zero, in which case there's no market potential for a profit, and therefore the goods become essentially free and not scarce and can be produced and shared with each other. That's a phenomena up until the time I wrote this book, which just wasn't recognized. But boy, as soon as that book was published, every company in the world, they're, they've been holding board meetings, they're talking about, they understand this. This isn't esoteric. They see it happening, but it was almost like saying, here, let's take a moment and, sh and, and figure out what is actually happening here. They knew it, but they were kind of turning their eyes away from it. Denial. But it's, it's mm -hmm. so obvious now. Mm -hmm. It's a shakeup unlike anything we've seen in capitalism, I would say, since the beginning of the first industrial revolution. So this third industrial revolution really takes us into a completely new economic paradigm. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome.